Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Bruce with Abowski Studio. I am out feeling restless, going for a drive, and I'm hoping to go to one spot that I was looking at the other day and uh, do a painting. So thanks for joining me, and uh, on we go. So one challenge that's going to happen today is the lighting. It's kind of a flat gray, but very bright. The sun is trying to come out, but it's not going to be like high contrast between light and shadow. So I'm going to have to try to find something and I might have to accentuate the planes. Like if I find a structure of a barn, something like that, we'll see. So wish me luck. Okay. I just arrived at the location that I think I'm going to paint and the lights looking pretty good. So let me show you that. So there's what I'm thinking right over here. Those two barns and I'm not sure. I think I might skip the foreground shadow and fencing. I'm not sure yet, but definitely I want to get those buildings in there. And this one might be kind of a little different uh, manner of working for on my panel. So I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to be painting on a 9 by 12. I know uh, just a few seconds ago I mentioned uh, about doing something a little different. I thought I had a larger panel that I was just going to use the top part of to make it a little wider. But uh, this will I have, this will work fine. And for the palette we have burnt sienna, yellow ochre, ivory black, titanium white, ultramarine blue, cad yellow light, cad red. Now I'll be using some liquid today. And there's uh, some starter brushes to get the sketching going, get the drawing in. And of course my scraper for when I need to clean up dirty piles. And we have just starting with two palette knives, you know, one to mix, one to apply paint if I choose to. And I also carry, of course, more brushes if I need more variety, just in case, depending on what I'm painting, and that way I don't have to keep packing a kit. I can just, if I bring a bigger canvas, I'll have bigger brushes to work with. As some uh, recent videos uh, that I've done, I'll be using ivory black to sketch in the subject, get the values in, and I'm not going to put in the foreground shadow. It's not really strong or defined. I can make up some of it, but I really just want to have more, get some of that interesting sky going on. So I'm going to have a low field here. There's some interesting things going on near the barns, some uh, a little tree. It was interesting while I was painting this piece, a uh, gentleman drove by, stopped, got out and talked to me. Turns out he owns that farm and uh, we got to chatting a little bit and he said anytime I wanted to come over, take a tour of it, which I thought was kind of nice of him. I'd like to take advantage of that because from the other roadway, the actual road that goes down to where I live, uh, there's a little collection of buildings and I think it'd be pretty interesting to see what other paintings uh, can come out of the location. That's what I love about the uh, outdoor painting. You never know who you're going to meet and who could be a potential customer or lead you to some other location that would be just as wonderful to paint. And this one barn on the left it kind of extends off and behind this tree and uh, I'm not going to make it as long as wide in the front as it is because I think it's a little distracting. Cover it a little bit with this tree here on the left and then there's a building behind all these in the back there and then the door is in the center because here's the peak of the barn So this was a tad tricky, cutting that building off on the left there, that barn. And you have to be very careful about how you do your angles because you don't want one side of the barn to look a little too lopsided. And uh, you want to be careful about that. And now I'm just kind of blocking in with a little tone to get some uh, shapes in general location that I can then work on later. Now over here... Along this roof line, there's a tangent with a hill in the background, so you want to be sure to pay attention to those. And I'm lowering that distant landmass. And we'll cool that off, send that to the back, 
the distant hill once I progress with the painting there. And there's no windows on this side of the on this barn here, but I'm going to add a couple for some interest because I think it's important. I think it'll make it more interesting rather than just a blah siding because you have the door on the barn on the left to give you some look inside, so to speak. Okay, that's a composition. And I'm actually going to add probably a power pole. Add some more. You got this height over here, which is nice, going up into the sky. And I think I'm going to add another element here that's not there. I'm going to pull something from the environment and uh, add that in there. Now, that is one thing you don't want to be afraid of doing. Uh, certain elements in a composition can look very interesting, but other parts need to kind of play well with the main character, if you will. In this case, these little collection of buildings here. And so I'm going to, I just feel there's another vertical element that needs to happen on the uh, right hand side a bit. So I'm thinking of putting some kind of element here, either a tree or a pole. I'm going to play around a little bit and see what I want to come up with. And there are some power poles out of scene that you can't see. Might pull those closer in to have that uh, sort of more structural element. Okay, now I've mixed up a tone of sky color to put on here and to give me an average tone that I can build into with a little bit darker value or a little bit lighter and modulate it that way. And I used ultramarine blue, a little bit of ivory black and just a smidge of cad red. And I'm just going to, with a little bit of liquid, I'm just going to start defining some of the sky. And it's a very kind of murky day, gray, but I want to have some interest in the sky as much as possible. I'm not going to over exaggerate, but I want to push and pull a few things and uh, just get, because it's almost like it's going to rain, but not really. So I want to get some movement in the sky and try to, with the uh, brushwork, and just have it kind of radiate up a little bit so as the, the suggestion that the lines are leading to the barns here nothing extravagant not like a, a 45 diagonal but just enough to give an idea that there's a little bit of brush brushwork leading the eye over to the left here a little more and again just using a little bit of liquid I'm not going to go overboard with that because it can start getting a little greasy so to speak and moving paint around a little slip slidey and I do want the paint to be fluid but also stick to where I put it if that makes sense so let me get going on that and I'll get back to you and with the sky when I'm, I'm enriching some of the color to show some of the blue sky coming through in parts and I'm going up to the previous edge and as I progress with the painting, I'll go back in and feather some of those edges. Some will do wet and wet right now, but others I'll just plant the color and then finesse it later. Sometimes I work different methods for how I approach a painting and I'm trying something a little different, sort of, with the uh, doing the sky first and then I can key the rest of the, uh, get the value of the sky correct and then I can key everything else down below for saturation and such. So something to experiment with in your own painting. And I've also added some uh, white and yellow ochre for a little warmth while I'm doing the sky here. It needs a little. And I'm almost done with the initial. I might come back in to, as I get the rest of the painting developed. I might see other adjustments that need to be made. But for right now, on its own, I like it. And I'm going to leave that for now and start working on this other section here. Now this barn right here is a little purplish in tone. That's why I like this scene because that's so different from this red. So I've mixed up some uh, ultramarine blue and just a little bit of cad red, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of ivory black 
and got this base tone. It's not a lot of paint there. I just want to get a tone on there and then I'll commit to some thicker layers. Don't worry about the windows. I can put those back in. And I'm not just going to fill it in. I'm going to put this tone a little here, a little there. And then I can go in between that with different other colors to make it more interesting. See how I like that. And of course there's variations. So I'll be mixing a little burnt sienna and white with a little cad red going in between some areas just to add a little more interest. A little of the blue sky color mixed into that uh, tone of the dirty red, so to speak. Just giving some variety. So I like that contrast there, it's pretty nice. And I mix some cad red, a little bit of cad yellow light. So I'll get this background hill painted in and I'm painting up to the sky. And then I'll tickle the edges together once I get some uh, other tones in here. That'll be the last step I do. So I don't get the sky tone into the green because it doesn't take much of this sky color. If I got just a little bit into that green, it'd be no fun. And sometimes everyone thinks that the distance is always very, very light, but it depends on what you're looking at and time of day, lighting, all that good stuff. And there's a little dark band of a distant, distant hill way back there. So I'm gonna try to suggest that. Just a hint little too green I'm gonna mix a little more blue in that just a hint that's nice that allow me to bring out some of these trees here I being careful here to vary the tones of the of the uh, green make some a little brighter some a little more earthy to add interest and also paying attention to how I apply the paint in terms of uh, brush stroke to give it more variety and interest uh, in that field Okay, so we're getting there and uh, like you saw just a second ago I'm working on the foreground field and I'm making sure to add some variety in the grass in, in terms of the color of greens So it's not just super bland. I'm not going overly crazy because there's some interest in the background I want to get to but uh, it's important to watch out for having just laying in a simple tone You want to variegate it a little bit Okay, we're coming along here. I had to charge up the battery just a little bit. I haven't gotten really too far along. And uh, just kind of cleaning up some edges here and uh, re, uh, restating the uh, pole there. Now I'm gonna be working on the trees back here and get those uh, blocked in. It's interesting, sometimes you think something's maybe not rich enough or dark enough, but once you start getting other colors next to it, you'll start to see the relationships and how it's gonna work out. So we have the roof receding on that barn in the back on the left. So I'm going to work on putting that in, which is some gray tone. So the roof of the barn recedes. As you can see, you can see the other side of the barn on the left. And I have to figure out how I'm going to work that into here and cut around some of the, the uh, shapes of the foliage. And, uh, but right now I'm just kind of 
figuring out the angle I want for the roof line and how that follows through to the bottom part of the barn. So I'm going to work on that now. So it actually looks like it might uh, start raining on me and I have been working on it a little bit uh, while I'm charging the battery here but uh, kind of advancing some of the uh, issues here and let's take a look what we got so far. I'm liking everything so far. I got to bring out some more contrast with uh, highlights on the bush even though it's kind of a flat day and then you do have some like a uh, sort of fading paint or half painted they didn't finish the job which is kind of a nice feature I kind of like that so I put that in there and this tree has to be finessed more to show uh, some dimension and uh, then I think I'm going to wrap it up and this little area over here is actually one of those little huts for calves uh, that they have on farms but I decided to make it into a hay bale with another little hay bale here just to show that sort of uh, lead into uh, you know farm life of course and what I'm going to work on now is cutting in the sky back around some of these uh, white pines to uh, bring out the shapes a little better and uh, then I'm going to call it good. Okay, we're going to wrap up this painting. Had a great time actually, and uh, because of this kind of weather, it allows you more time to finesse things and paint a little more. So I kind of worked on a few little details, pulling the painting a little more together than normal plein air pieces I do, because I'm not really looking to finish pieces. I just want to make color statements, but uh, this turned out pretty good. Let's take a look. Okay, here's what we got. Of course, you see the scene back there, and I'm pretty happy with uh, the overall effect. I always I comment if you have the same problem, but I actually don't do super well with greens. Uh, not my forte, so to speak, but tried. And of course, with the palette, you change the palette, you'll change the uh, tones of the greens you can get. But I'm liking some of the paint application and effects. Okay, everybody, I got everything packed in the car, headed back home. I had a great time painting, actually, even though uh, it seemed like right now it's going to sprinkle a bit. It hasn't yet, and I don't think it will, actually. But uh, allowed more time with this kind of weather to work on the piece, like I told you. And I uh, want to thank you for joining me. And if you were new watching for the first time, thanks for checking it out. And I invite you to subscribe so you can see future videos. Okay, everybody, see you later.